This ghost town is exceptionally well preserved as part of the Yankee Fork State Park and has a lot to offer for visitors to see as well as miles of trails beyond it. We'll show you where this gem in the gem state is at right here on Ghost Towns and More. In the middle of Idaho, on the eastern edge of the Salmon Chalice National Forest, is a ghost town in a beautiful narrow canyon setting with good roads for access and easy travel. Popular lore about the early beginnings of this ghost town go back to 1864, when a lone prospector with two bay horses was found digging in one of the nearby canyons, who reportedly discovered gold in one of his searches. When others heard the story, those who related it could not remember the identity of the man except for that he had two bay horses with him. Over time, the name describing the horses eventually became associated with the area and the mining camp that would soon follow, wherein the name Bay Horse remained permanent. Although the area attracted miners and prospectors who came in search of gold, it wasn't until 1872 when three miners discovered a rich vein of silver in the same area. Soon other veins of silver were found and the mines were started, bringing in equipment, men, and numerous cabins. By 1880 the town was firmly established with large-scale mining. The hillsides were covered with cabins and the main street in town had numerous saloons, boarding houses, banks, assay offices, and a stone Wells Fargo building. The largest and most productive of the mines, the Ramshorn, had a very interesting story of how it was started. A local hunter shot and killed a large ram that fell on a rock ledge. The hunter found that where the ram fell was on a silver outcropping that had a rich silver vein, and so the new mine was named the Ramshorn. By 1882, the town had a modest population of 300 people, and although it was comparatively small to other boom towns, the town of Bay Horse was a busy place. The people in town also consisted of different nationalities, and later censuses showed people from Greece, Hungary, Italy, Scotland, Ireland, Scandinavia, and China. Although the mining district produced steady returns for a time, the winters were harsh and miners were subjected to the perils of mining. There were accidents, lung diseases, infections, and some miners suffered so much they even took their own lives. Despite the difficulties and risks of mining, families moved in and after the turn of the century, Bay Horse was considered to have a more family-friendly atmosphere. On May 14, 1889, a fire broke out that destroyed several buildings in town. The people rebuilt. But by the year 1900, the mines were beginning to play out. A drop in silver prices over the previous 10 years forced many mines to close, and people started moving away. The Ramshorn mine continued producing after the drop in silver prices up until about 1925. After that, only sporadic mining took place until the last attempt in 1968.
In recent years, the entire town site was purchased by the state of Idaho and turned into a state park for the preservation of what was left of Bay Horse. Today, visitors can see many of the remaining structures, including the impressive stamp mill on the hillside and the stone Wells Fargo building. Interpretive signs allow visitors to enjoy a self-guided tour of the entire town, and there is a small admission fee when you park. The old charcoal kilns used in the smelting process are located further up the canyon and across the river. Outdoor enthusiasts can enjoy exploring the surrounding mountains on several trails and also find good places to camp. And there you have it, Bay Horse, Idaho, where the whispers of the past still linger in the mountain air. Join us next time as we embark on another journey to unravel the historical stories on ghost towns and more. Until then, keep exploring! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on upcoming episodes.